Hello and good morning. Today is Monday, the 17th of October, 2022, and I'm Rashawn Gidwani. Local stocks continued their losing streak on Friday, even as most Asian markets rallied following robust overnight gains on Wall Street. The benchmark Straits Times Index fell for the seventh straight day, dipping 0.03% or 0.84 points to 3,039.61, hitting a fresh 19-month low. For the week, the market barometer was down 3.4% or 106.20 points. UG Healthcare Core is proposing to diversify its existing glove manufacturing and distribution business and be involved in the development, management, and operation of active retirement homes and healthcare and wellness business. A joint venture consortium intends to begin the Active Retirement Homes Project in Malaysia, which is located 21 kilometers south from the newly opened Desaru Coast Ferry Terminal in Johor. Paul Chu, head of research, views the transaction as the major change in business strategy and risk. Research sees little synergy or advantage between manufacturing of gloves and property development and investment. Research's neutral recommendation and target price of 0.20 Singapore dollars is under review. Keppel Corporation Limited will be commencing charters for four rigs assets in Saudi Arabia. The four KF ELSB class jackup rigs will be deployed on bareboat charters in Saudi Arabia this month. The rigs are being chartered in pairs to Arabian Drilling Company and ADES Saudi Limited Company, respectively, and are expected to generate a total charter revenue of about 250 million Singapore dollars over three to five years. Terence Chua, our senior research analyst, believes that as utilization and day rates continue to rise $20,000 a day on average, demand for modern high-specification jack-up rigs continue to grow. In their view, the deployment of the bareboat charters in Saudi Arabia will strengthen the value proposition of Keppel's rig assets to its customers and investors. Research believes this further reinforces Keppel's ability to monetize its legacy rigs and is a positive event for the deal with Semcor Marine. Researchers, researchers, buy recommendation and target price of $8.95 is maintained. AEM Holdings announced in a bourse filing on Friday that it has raised its revenue guidance for the full year ending December 31st upwards to between 820 million Singapore dollars and 850 million Singapore dollars. This is up from its previous financial year 2022 revenue guidance of between 750 million Singapore dollars and 800 million Singapore dollars as part of its investor presentation for the half year ended June 30th this year. Agri-food company Japfa on Friday said that its China dairy unit, Ostasia Investment Holdings, now referred to as Ostasia Group, has filed an application to extend its proposed listing on the stock exchange of Hong Kong. The company did not give a revised timeline for the application or the listing in the Boris filing. Wall Street stocks closed sharply lower on Friday as investors worried about inflation and rising interest rates while the dollar rose against the yen and sterling after the British Prime Minister's firing of her finance minister. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 403.89 points or 1.3% to 29,634.83. The S&P 500 lost 86.84 points or 2.4% to 3,583.07. And the Nasdaq composite dropped 327.76 points or 3.1% to 10,321.39. South Korea plans to offer a digital identity secured by blockchain to citizens with a smartphone. Smartphone implanted IDs are among the latest emerging technology underpinning a digital economy. The World Bank calls digital IDs a game changer, and McKinsey & Co. sees their potential to increase a nation's gross domestic output by up to 13%. Korea could reap at least 60 trillion won in economic value within a decade. Broadcom will seek early European Union antitrust approval of its proposed 61 billion US dollars buy of cloud computing company VMware by pointing to competition from Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. The deal is the second biggest globally so far this year and marks Broadcom's attempt to diversify its business into enterprise software. Tech deals have drawn intense 
scrutiny from regulators around the world concerned about power concentration in a few players and the possibility of bigger companies acquiring startups only to shut them down. Amazon shoppers appear to have shrugged off promotions for discounted phone chargers and air fryers during this week's Prime Day like sales bonanza. The 48-hour event dubbed the Prime Early Access Sale ran through Wednesday. For Amazon, the event tested how members of its Prime subscription program would respond to two major discount events in the same year, after the company's main Prime Day sale in July. Maximilian Koswoyo, research analyst, believes that the Prime Early Access Sale event faces tough comparison to this year's Prime Day, which was referred to as the biggest Prime Day event by Amazon. Research suspects consumers may have already spent their shopping budget during the July event and decided not to make any more purchases. Nonetheless, research feels that the October event has helped in boosting Amazon's fourth quarter 2022 performance and clearing the currently high level of inventory. Our neutral rating and target price of $133 US for Amazon is maintained. On Friday, Morgan Stanley posted third quarter results that missed analysts' expectations as investment banking revenue collapsed by 55%. The New York-based bank said profit of 2.63 billion US dollars or 1.47 US dollars a share fell 29% from a year earlier. JP Morgan Chase on Friday posted results that topped analyst estimates as the biggest US bank by assets took advantage of rising rates to generate more interest income. The bank said third quarter profit fell 17% from a year earlier to 9.74 billion US dollars or 3.12 US dollars a share as the firm added to reserves for bad loans by a net 808 million US dollars. That's all for today. Thank you for watching the Daily Morning Note. For financial news, tune in weekdays at 8.30 a.m. live on YouTube and Facebook. See you again.